remember in the last lecture we had started studying angle modulation techniques uh, we saw the basic uh, mathematical representation as well as its spectrum for a, a very basic signal its expected bandwidth carrying 98% of the power then we also saw the bandwidth for a general signal finally we went to the circuits that implement these angle modulators and demodulators so we were covering uh, angle demodulators uh, and we saw that the basic theme is to convert an fm signal to an am signal and then apply the am uh, demodulation techniques uh, we had covered also the feedback fm demodulator now we will start understanding the last demodulator and that is an alternative to the feedback you can see uh, modulation demodulator and that is called the phase lock loop very important uh, circuit in communications and is widely used uh, in almost uh, all com in almost many of the communication applications so details are given in this section but here you will give a brief overview uh, to get an idea of the phase lock loop uh, in the phase lock loop first of all the input is assumed to be an fm signal remember we are studying phase lock loop for a fm demodulator so we assume that the input that is coming to the phase lock loop is actually an fm signal like this where we know in fm signal the phase the instantaneous phase is actually equal to the integral of the message signal okay this was studied in detail in the previous lectures that actually the a uh, deviation from the carrier frequency is is equal to or directly equal or equal to the or is directly proportional to the message signal uh, which is equal to the instantaneous phase from there you can you could find the phase is equal to this thing okay, this we have studied about two times in the last lectures in 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 the last two lectures now if this is an fm signal so we want to get this phi of t now how can we get this we apply this input to the phase lock loop and the phase lock loop has a vco a voltage control oscillator now the schematic is as follows so this is the input which is an fm signal and we have a phase comparator a loop filter but at the same time we have a vco a voltage control oscillator now what happens is the voltage control oscillator has an output whose frequency we know will be proportional to the input control voltage as we saw you know we see uh, when we were studying the uh, frequency uh, modulators so if you have zero input control voltage you could see the output frequency of your vco will be just fc but if there is some control voltage then you can see that the output frequency of your vco is uh, fc plus directly proportional to the input voltage all right this we also saw when we were studying the uh, oscillators uh, voltage control or uh, voltage control oscillators or we could have uh, inductors but the voltage control oscillators they could depend they on the capacitances that were uh, um, time varying with respect to the input voltage so finally we got that the frequency is equal to the carrier plus the Uh, proportional to in the input control voltage
so you could very well see this means that the output of the VCO will be of this form where the phase will be actually integral of the message signal. Now your question will be sir why this comes out to be like an FM signal. The reason is again the basic concept that FVT minus FC, FVT is instantaneous frequency minus the carrier frequency is now directly proportional to the message signal which is now the control voltage. This means that the instantaneous phase is now directly proportional to KVVT or you can see FVT minus FCT uh, or uh, instantaneous frequency is actually proportional. This means the phase will be equal to integral of uh, you know 2 pi KV VT. Same thing that we studied uh, in the beginning of this chapter. If you could see this was a very basic concept that the difference instantaneous minus carrier is equal to directly proportional to the message signal which is actually equal to the instantaneous frequency and hence the phase comes out to be 2 pi kf mt integral of mt comes out of the phase of an fm signal so same thing is happening here this was our instantaneous frequency formula we saw earlier capacitance were written like this and this gave us a frequency so here you could see again that fv minus fc is equal to kvvt and instantaneous frequency is equal to you know 1 over 2 pi and uh, uh, you know a differential of phase so phase comes out to be 2 pi kv integral of vt 2 pi kV integral of virus. This is also an FM signal whose message signal is uh, is VT and whose phase is integral of VT. All right. Now, this output of the message signal goes to the phase comparator. Okay. So what is the phase comparator? Phase comparator takes the output of the VC, it takes the output of the input signal and it will multiply both these uh, inputs to it and then it will apply uh, an appropriate filter, a low pass filter to get, by, uh, to get the signal that is desired. So first of all, let us see the book. In the book, he directly gives that this is the answer but there were some steps missing. So I have mentioned in my notes. So the first step, you multiply the input signal with the VCO's output. So input signal is a pure FM signal. VCO output is a, you know, made up FM signal uh, at your receiver corresponding to the, you know, the uh, control voltage. This is corresponding to the message signal. Now, once they are multiplied, so you can see that cos uh, alpha sine beta, this will be sine alpha plus beta minus sine alpha minus beta. So now we, in the second step, we will have a filter that will, that will take out this large frequency component at 2FC and you will just get this component as follows. All right. You can also write this as a change of sign. This minus goes inside 5VT minus 5T. So this gives us the difference between uh, the phase of the VCO and the phase of the uh, FM signal. And if this phase error is small, all right, then uh, you can just say that sign of a small angle is small so it comes out to be something like this or if you want to keep 5t minus 5v this will be minus both are actually similar here so as book has defined phi error as 5t minus 
phi v this is v so we will write this as phi e t this will be the output of the uh, comparator the output comparator will be the error signal times this there will be plus minus sign uh, depending on what definition you take so so if you take even this thing and there will be a minus sign here okay as you can see in the notes if i take phi t minus phi v there will be a minus so more details are actually given in the chapter 8 but uh doesn't make a difference even if we have minus we are actually interested in the difference signal the difference could be plus or minus uh, uh doesn't make much of a difference so this is the error signal all right uh, with correction as given in the notes you can see this will be the front of book this will be like this if you take this definition will be like this same thing no problem so we go by the book and you can correct this as Uh, et will be minus of this and sign goes away then minus half av ac into phi t minus phi v t this one now so for this assumption phase error has to be small so this is a small angle so sign of small angle comes out to be the angle and if this is so this is we say that the phase lock loop is in lock position it has been locked onto the input and uh, our phase lock loop can be simplified as follows that you have the error signal close to the loop filter gives you a control voltage pass through an integral okay so we are just talking in terms of the message signal okay which is actually present all in the phase all right so vt comes out it goes in an integral okay it gives me phi vt the phase part phi vt phi vt difference gives me phi e the error again loop filter and so on and so forth our phase lock loop is in the lock position now i can express my error signal as phi minus phi vt and you know phi vt is actually the integral of the control voltage All right uh or it is a locally generated fm signal with respect to the control signal coming out of the loop filter now i take differentiation on both the sides this become differential uh this become a differential differential integral cancels and you have two vk vt this goes on this side so this term and this goes this remains here now if you know what is vt ठीक है, VT itself, according to this figure, VT is actually the convolution of phi e t with the impulse response of the loop filter, which is G of t. So I can very well write as phi of tau or phi e of tau into G of t minus tau convolution. And if I take its Fourier, then I know Fourier of differential is just multiplication of its Fourier with J two pi f. into fourier of this again j2 pi f into fourier of this and you know convolution is just multiplication so 2 pi kv is as it is there its fourier is phi ef and jt fourier let us say is gf here let us say i divide by 2 pi so you know 2 pi will cancel and then i divide by jf so you can see here 2 pi can this will be kv over jf and uh, this will be totally you know cancel 2 pi and then jf it will totally cancel phi of f so phi error you can take phi error constant this will come out to be 1 plus kv over jf gf and this will come here in the denominator so this will be the error so uh the output voltage from the loop filter or the control voltage for here is actually equal to 
the input signals for here coming from the phase block loop times the frequency response of the loop filter. So I just multiply them. I put this value from here to here. All right. So this is value coming from here. This is G of F. Now the design is such that or the loop filter for your GFF is such so that this factor is much, much greater than one, especially for the frequency band of the matches signal. So remember here we are taking W. So this loop filter is designed so that the frequency band is corresponding to the W, the bandwidth of the message signal, not the bandwidth of the, uh, not the bandwidth of the FM signal, okay, which was you know two beta plus one into W, which was much many times greater than W. So this is kept larger. So this one can be neglected. So this GF GF cancels. So JF goes in the numerator. I multiply by two pi, divide by two pi. Vf comes out to be j2 pi f 2 pi kv into phi f. And if I take its inverse for here, this becomes v of t 1 over 2 pi kv remains as such. And j2 pi f means it is the differential of the uh, message signal. So it comes out to be um, a differential of, uh, you know, Fourier inverse of phi f. So this is like this, phi t. But very important thing, what is Differential d by t of phi t, we just saw in the definition of fm that d by dt of phi t is actually nothing uh, but equal to uh, kf into mt, the 2 pi here, so 2 pi into kf uh, mt. The 2 pi into kf mt, 2 pi 2 pi cancels, and you have kf kv mt. This means control voltage coming out of the loop filter is actually directly proportional to the message signal. All right. So the message signal is going into the VCO. VCO is producing an FM signal, which is trying to be of the same phase as of the input signal. And if there is error, that error is generating the control voltage, which is the message signal. Hence, you can get the message signal VT as output of control voltage. So this is a desired message signal coming out of the GF filter or the loop filter. And GF bandwidth is the same as a message bandwidth, not the bandwidth of the FM signal as was happening in previous demodulators. So the noise of the filter is filter is has a bandwidth of W. Yes. Uh, VC output is an FM signal. Okay. That is trying to follow the FM of the receive signal. And major benefit is that we will be seeing in the chapter six that uh, threshold effect is reduced so and that will be studied in chapter 6. Now we come to the commercial aspects of frequency modulation. So one is the famous you know FM radio. It mostly works within this band. from 88 to 100 megahertz and you know the famous 100 FM band, 100 megahertz FM band or you say FM 100. Now in this band, the carrier frequencies are separated by 200 kilohertz. So me this means that their bandwidth will be roughly 200 kilohertz. Uh, the peak frequency deviation is fixed at 75 kilohertz. So If you can remember what was the peak frequency deviation, peak frequency deviation meant that the maximum frequency deviation and what could be the maximum frequency deviation. So, you know, this is the message signal. The, the frequency dev, uh, deviation was actually, you know, instantaneous frequency minus the carrier frequency. That will be the frequency deviation. The maximum will be the maximum value of empty. So there's a mistake. So the maximum value of empty times kf, this will give me the maximum frequency deviation. So we keep the maximum frequency deviation to 75 kilohertz. 75 kilohertz. Now there is a concept of pre-emphasis. Uh, pre 
I said I have okay. I didn't show here. Uh, it was presented in my old notes, but I will just explain you. We will be studying, you know, pre-emphasis and de-emphasis in chapter six, and uh, uh, mere understanding at this level is that a noise actually, especially for angle modulation techniques, noise actually increases for higher. Uh, uh, higher frequencies, okay. So you need a mechanism to uh, tackle it, and for that purpose, we apply uh, pre-emphasis, which is actually a high-pass filter, and then we have de-emphasis, which is actually a low-pass filter. So in pre-emphasis. Uh, we emphasize upon the high frequencies. All right. So if they are faced with a noise that is increasing with respect to frequency, you will also have the signal which is also increasing with respect to the frequency. All right. So this will be studied in detail. And once the signal is received, we de-emphasize it. So whatever emphasis that has been placed on the high frequency component is uh, is de-emphasized, is, uh, is taken off, and whatever the uh, de-emphasis was placed on the lower frequency component is actually emphasized by the de-emphasis filter. So de-emphasis is a low-pass filter, while pre-emphasis is a high-pass filter. So we will be studying this in detail in Chapter 6. So what happens? We have signals of this bandwidth, of this FM signals of this bandwidth uh, within this carrier range. Uh, with this deviation, all right, with this peak frequency deviation, and uh, okay, and they are pre-emphasized. Okay, now they are sent. Now at the receiver, we again have the same super heterodyne receiver. So this is a super heterodyne receiver. Uh, you can see this remains the same as was in AM super heterodyne receiver. But there you know the IF frequency was 455 kilohertz. Here the IF frequency is 10.7 megahertz. The IF amplifier will have a bandwidth of 200 kilohertz. While there, if you could remember, uh, its bandwidth was uh, different. Okay. So here it will just uh, get you that bandwidth, all right? And so common I have 200 kilohertz, and uh, center or uh, intermediate frequency is 10.7 as compared to 455 there. So we know the message signal is in the frequency or in the phase of the carrier. And any amplitude variations uh, do not represent the signal. So we can get rid of these variations by applying a limiter. All variations are because of noise and interference. The limiter removes any amplitude variation because the amplitude cannot vary. Any change has to be in the phase or you know the frequency. So we hard limit the signal amplitude. And then we have a bandpass filter which is centered at 10.7 megahertz with a bandwidth of 200 kilohertz is included in the limiter to remove these higher frequency components introduced by the non-linearity in the hard limiter. So the hard limiter will remove any amplitude variations because of that you will have high frequency components generated and they will be uh, neglected by a bandpass filter tuned at 10.7 megahertz uh, inside this limiter of 200 kilohertz. So after, after the limiter, you will just get your channel centered around 200 kilohertz.
and uh, after that we have a balanced discriminator all right so you know it does a function of converting an fm to an am lastly you have you know audio amplifier which has de emphasis pre emphasis was performed frequency components higher frequency components amplitude was increased and uh lower frequency components were decreased at this transmitter but at the receiver opposite will happen higher frequencies will be de-emphasized while lower frequency components will be emphasized and then we have amplification amplification and finally uh, the output of this audio amplifier is again filtered by a low pass filter to remove out of band noise and then the output is fed to a loudspeaker again low pass filters we just get back the signal of your band and finally the loudspeaker okay this is a bit of a mathematics which was not represented there if i assume that the message signal was a 5 kilohertz bandwidth so you know beta is actually the maximum divided by uh, w this comes out to be 15 so carson's bandwidth comes out to be 160 so you can see it is less than 200 allocated bandwidth really even let us say if my bandwidth is 15 kilohertz which means i you know basically for fm you want to send uh, high fidelity music uh, uh music as you want to clear or let us say very important speeches so you want to uh send higher frequency bands to especially for stereo broadcast that you might have a bandwidth of 15 kilohertz of the message signal in that case you know your beta comes out to be 5 and again your cancel bandwidth comes out to be 180 which is less than 200 kilohertz we also have a last application which is let us say fm stereo broadcast so many stations they uh, send uh music programs as you can see here by using outputs of two microphones which are placed on different part of the stage so signal could be said that one is a right from the left microphone and another signal is coming from the right microphone these two signals are added and they are also subtracted the addition or the added signal is left unchanged and it occupies a band from 0 to 15 kilohertz while the different signal is uh, it amplitude it uh, amplitude modulates uh double sided suppress a 38 kilohertz carrier signal and this 38 kilohertz signal is actually generated by multiplication by 2 of a 19 kilohertz oscillator signal so it becomes 19 238 this 19 kilohertz signal is also added to the composite or to the combined signal having addition subtraction with 38 addition as it is this with 38 plus this 19 this pilot is also added so that it could help in synchronous demodulation so pilot tone is placed at 19 kilohertz uh instead of 38 kilohertz so that can be separated from the combined signal and this combined signal is then frequency modulates the carrier <sighs> can see the diagram of what is happening so you have two signals coming from two microphones left and right so at one we are adding those two microphones another point we are subtracting the two microphones all right so again we have to apply pre emphasis as this happens in commercial fm radio broadcast this additive signal as well as this subtractive this subtractive signal is now amplitude modulated double sideband suppressed carrier with 
euro 19 kilohertz double 38 kilohertz carrier now this signal combined with the original baseband signal and combined with the parallel signal at 19 kilohertz is now sent to the fm demodulator so the baseband picture looks like this this is the uh, positive frequency baseband signal for the uh, combined left plus right signal this is the pilot tone and at 38 kilohertz we have the different signal left minus right and again you know its bandwidth will be again 15 kilohertz 15 this will be a 30 kilohertz bandwidth 23 kilohertz this will be a total baseband signal which is used to demodulate your fm signal so the signals are they are compatible with conventional this will be sent in a conventional fm with all those things which we told you 200 kilohertz bandwidth requirement and you know at 75 kilohertz peak and all that now this signal will be received here the same super heterodyne receiver after the fm discriminator you know balance discriminator so we will have three signals already in the baseband one signal is 0 to 15 kilohertz okay that will go directly go into the de emphasis and this is the baseband signal you will directly get uh, m1 plus m left plus m right because you have passed it through a filter 0 to 15 kilohertz you will just get the frequencies from 0 to 15 kilohertz then we have a narrow band filter 219 kilohertz this will give me the carrier of the pilot from the pilot will get the carrier signal i will frequency double i will get 38 kilohertz so we exactly synchronized with uh, the signal at 38 kilohertz which has been frequency modulated uh, am modulated with the bandwidth of 30 kilohertz So I pass through band pass filter. I will just get that uh, that 30 kilohertz signal around 38 kilohertz. So I demodulate it. I will just get my different signal at the baseband level for positive frequency 0 to 15 kilohertz. I will de-emphasize, and this will be giving me m left minus m right. So if if I add m left minus m right with m left plus m right, m right m right cancels. I will get m left here. while here you can very well see this will be m left plus m right minus m left plus m right so minus uh, you can see that uh, m left left cancels and you are getting m right so it at the receiver you will again have the same phenomena that was happening at the transmitter side that you will be hearing the left and right sound of your stereo those fm receivers uh, who are not configured to receive this fm stereo signal they will only only have the base have this branch they won't have these branches so this signal will just pass and you will get a sum signal of m1 plus m m left plus m right which is called a monophonic output signal where you have only one channel for its output so this completes our fm chapter If any student has any questions, you can ask before we uh, move further. All right, no student has any question. So now we go to the next chapter, and this chapter is the famous probability and random processes. Much of it you have studied in your uh last course so we won't go into details of random variables uh their pdfs their cdfs uh their joint distributions uh their you know jacobians or uh functions are random variable and what will be their pdfs or cdfs we won't be going to detail in uh, in those things those things i think you have studied and you can cover our course will directly start uh 
uh, from section 5.2, which is random processes. So I have also been told that you have studied random processes in your previous course. Uh, Haji, Salman Jameel sahab, can you hear me? Salman Jameel sahab, can you hear me? I think he cannot listen or there's some problem or he's not there. Actually, he cannot listen. Uh, are you roll number 101? Can you hear me? Roll number 101? All right. All right. Uh, Achha. Do we have uh, Hamza 172, the CR of D section? Can you hear me? Many students are absent or all right. Uh, all right. Aram Ishwak, can you hear me? Aram Ishwak. It's really strange. Any student can hear me? Oh uh, yes, sir. तो आप कहाँ से थे इतनी देर से? Yes sir. Yes sir. सर मैं इधर अभी एक मिनट क्लास छोड़के गया था. हाँ सर. Sorry. अच्छा सलमान जमील साहब, have you studied random processes in your previous course? सर वो ना random processes probability के आखिर में सिर्फ उनका वो basic idea लिया था कि stationary process, random process और उनकी general definition, expected value, random processes की. लेकिन सिर्फ दो तीन lectures पढ़े थे, ज़्यादा नहीं किया था इसपे. All right. So you have a, I mean, an idea, but you have not gone into, you know, the mathematical details or many examples or end problems for random process have not been covered in the last course. Is this right? Sir, it was three lectures. Sir, in that, sir, we had given a general idea. Then, after that, we had auto correlation, cross correlation processes. Key, their covariance, mean, expected value. These properties we had not taught. लेकिन कोई प्रॉब्लम्स नहीं किए थे सिर्फ सर ने थोड़ी सी एग्जांपल्स कराई थी और इसपे सिर्फ तीन लेक्चर लिए थे हमने तो ज़्यादा डिटेल में नहीं पढ़ा हुआ लेकिन जनरल ओवरव्यू है ऑल राइट थैंक यू वेरी मच सो वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग सो आई थिंक पार्ट ऑफ इट विल बी अ रिवीजन एस यू हैव uh, we are not studying stochastic processes here. Here, the main objective is to understand the application of uh, random processes in uh, communication or in, uh, you know, signal processing. That is the main thing. So, random processes are a natural extension of random variables. We know in communications, we have time-varying signals. Until chapter 4, you could very well see all the signals were deterministic. There was no probabilistic or no probability associated with any of the signals. You had a pure, let us say, even signal, odd signal, real signal, imaginary signal, Fourier transforms, Fourier series, amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, phase modulation. But everything that was happening was happening deterministically. It was happening mathematically by equations, uh, um, you know, by deterministic, uh, by convolution, by filtering, by bandpass filtering, by low pass filtering, by multiplication, and all that. So it was totally deterministic. Maybe you had a nonlinear or linear, that is another thing, but the signals were deterministic. But what happens in communication is that the deterministic assumption is not valid. And it is more appropriate to model signals as random. Signals become random. One example is the famous thermal noise. Aji, so have you studied thermal noise in any course, previous course? Sir, void Gaussian wise, Gaussian wise, but I did random processes. Thermal noise. 
अच्छा आपने व्हाइट नॉइस का थोड़ा सा आइडिया दिया था थोड़ा सा एक्सेंट है ठीक है अब आप यहां पे आपके पास मैथ भी हो जाएगी ऑलराइट सो थर्मल नॉइस इज प्रेजेंट इन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक सर्किट्स दैट वी विल आल्सो बी गोइंग इनटू अ बिट डिटेल सो व्हाट इज दिस नॉइस इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट स्पेशली फॉर कम्युनिकेशन दिस इज एट द हार्ट ऑफ डिजाइन ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम्स बट इवन नाउ इन फ्यूचर इट इज नॉट बिकमिंग इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर पावर सर्किट्स बट विल टेक टाइम वेयर uh after which stochastic or random processes they become integral part of power system design so but here in communications they are a fundamental part so what is thermal noise uh now thermal noise actually occurs because of the random movement of electron if you could remember in if you could remember in electromagnetics uh in chapter 5 you saw the electrons are moving randomly even if we apply an electric field the random motion does not subsides it is still there but yes a bit of that random direct random movement is directed towards the direction opposite to the direction of the applied electric field so that random movement because of thermal agitation assume that there is no electric field all right will result in a random current and voltage all right so that random thing can be described only statistically other examples in communications as we have studied in the beginning lectures of this course was radio waves when you send your my mobile signal or let us say your radio especially your am and fm signals so we saw earlier that you have a uh, ionosphere so these waves they uh, get reflected from different layers of ionosphere so from different layers you will have reflections so uh, you know layers are on top of one another So the reflected waves they will be uh, reflected at different levels, so they will be uh, coming at different positions on the Earth's surface, and because of that, long-range broadcasting becomes possible. So I told you, especially if you are working in with communication systems, so you will observe at night you have uh, larger communication signals as compared to the morning. So normally. if we are testing we try to test in the morning because then we have less interference as we saw earlier at night we have you all these layers and then they have large reflections and you get more signals now so now again these reflections are ever changing all right the sky uh, and its model is also quite random its layers are random they are temperature dependent and all that so receive signal is again random so again we have a random signal that is coming uh, into the picture other very important description is the information source the sentences that i am speaking i do not know what i will be exactly saying after let us say 1 and 2 or 3 4 minutes so what i am occurring is also completely random so information sources are also modeled by you know random processes so the uh, random process become very important uh for communication especially for those students who want to master uh signal processing uh for uh signal processing techniques for uh future you know uh for future you know for future for future systems where you have uh, signal processing which is working with deterministic and random signals uh at the same time now we have to understand a random process but more importantly we have to i also understand the pictorial representation and i think uh, you have also said we some of it so this there will be a this first few part will be a review and then my you might be learning some new extra things <clears throat> so a random process or a random segment is actually one of the possible realizations of signal waveforms as you saw random variable was a mapping of the output of a random experiment to a real line and as the experiment could give you different results or your sample space let us say if a dice could go from 1 to 6 uh so your output of a random experiment which is represented in a sample space 
it could be any of the various numbers of the dice. For example, if you take a dice, all right. If you take a coin, I will have only two uh, outputs or two or uh, a size of two outputs in my sample space. If a dice, I have six. But each of them, each of these outputs have a probability, half for a head tail if it is a fair dice, and uh, one over six for a uh, you know dice uh, with a coin, uh, half of a head tail and one over six for a fair dice for each face. So I had mapped the sample output to a real number that was a random variable. So what is a random signal? Random signal actually maps the sample output to a signal. Random variable is mapping to a random variable um, uh, to a real line. The output of a sample space or the output of a uh, random experiment or the sample space is mapped to a real line. Here you can say that the sample space is mapped to a uh, actually to a to a signal. All right. So that is why that signal can be called a random. So you can get if I have 10, uh, 10 outputs of my sample space, I can get 10 different signals. Signals. There, there it was random variable. Random variable was a single value. A signal, you know, it is a uh, a signal which is varying with time. So you are getting a time domain signal for one sample output of a random experiment. Okay. So in random process, we have signals, functions of time instead of random numbers or random values. This is the only difference. So let us say uh, I have a signal generator. that can generate uh, any of the six possible sinusoids. All right. Amplitude of, of all sinusoids is one. The phase for all of them is zero. But the frequencies could be, you know, 100, 200, 600. So they have been mapped to a dice. If dice is one, the frequency will be 100 times 1. So frequency will be 100 F, where F is the output of a dice. You just multiply by 100. 100 F becomes a frequency of your signal generator. All right, so we have combined the output of a random experiment, which goes from 1 to 6, and have we have mapped it to a number which now generates a signal. So it becomes a random process. Here the random process will be given as cosine 2 pi 100 ft. So f is the output of the dice. This becomes 100 f. So frequency is 100 f. 2 pi 100 f, this becomes uh, the phase of cos and hence cos of this phase gives you the Signal. So this signal could be a hundred hertz frequency, a six hundred hertz frequency, depending on the output of your experiment, which depends on throwing of a dice. So it is a random process. Other examples could be, let us say, that I have a phase now, which is changing from zero to two pi. And this phase is uniform. All right. Uh, so we have a uniform phase going from uh, 0 to 2 pi. So you know what will be its height? It's a PDF or it's, yes, it's PDF. If its width is from 0 to 2 pi, what will be its height? Uh, and uh, roll number 101, can you listen? Roll number 101. All right. And 
हाँ जी सलमान साहब कैन यू लिसन सलमान जी सर अच्छा जी सर मैंने कुछ थोड़ा सा रिवीज नहीं कर रहा था मैं इफ यू आई से दैट आई हैव अ रैंडम वेरिएबल दैट इज यूनिफॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड फ्रॉम 0 टू 2 पाई सो व्हाट विल बी द हाइट ऑफ इट्स पीडीएफ इफ इट इज अ सर 1 ओवर 2 पाई यस 1 ओवर 2 पाई यस यस ऑल राइट गुड Uh, I hope all other students are also there. I want to ask questions, but I don't know. ये तो मैं वैसे ही randomly पूछना शुरू कर देता हूँ. So you are right. It will be one over two pi because you know one over two pi integrated from zero to two pi will be one, and we know that the overall uh, CDF, overall uh, you know the area under the curve of PDF is always equal to one. So it has to be one over two pi. So we have this signal here. You can see the phase. is varying from 0 to 2 pi so for any random variable between 0 to 2 pi it will have a certain uniform probability 1 over 2 pi and it will come here once it come here it will change the signal and you will get a new signal theek okay? hai so again this signal now is a random process and you can see here this was if theta is 0 Theta is minus pi by four. It is shifted by pi by four. It is delayed by pi by four. If theta is you know three pi by four, it is advanced by three pi by four. So you have a new signal corresponding to every other random variable, random random value, or you know output the random experiment, or, or you can say the random variable. Here we are getting a random variable. All right. You can also say this hundred f is also a random variable. So every random variable giving is giving me a new uh, random signal. That is why it is called a random process uh another and example is that let us say my random process is a random variable equal to a random variable and another variable is taking a value from minus 1 to 1 all right so this is also pushed it ha ji ehsan hasan mohammad yunus can you hear me roll number 187 can you hear me yes sir अच्छा देखें वो ही इज सेइंग दैट आई हैव अ यूनिफॉर्म रैंडम वेरिएबल व्हिच इज फ्रॉम -1 टू 1 सो व्हाट विल बी द हाइट ऑफ द पीडीएफ ऑफ दिस यूनिफॉर्म रैंडम वेरिएबल इफ इट एग्जिस्ट फ्रॉम -1 टू 1 अच्छा इसे और से पूछ लेते हैं और सर अभी समझ नहीं आ रहा जरा अच्छा चलो ठीक है किससे पूछें यार अरम अरम कैन यू हियर मी सारे गायब हो गए ऑल राइट हाँ जी सलमान जमील कैन यू टेल मी व्हाट विल With one over two width, you will then get only one for a height of one over two. All right. So, so random variable is here from minus one to one. So I will choose any number, and that number will be the output of my process. So that process will again be a random process. See, the output could be any number between minus one and one. It could be point three. So output will be point three. It could be minus point six. Output will be minus point six. It could be zero. It could be one. It could be any number from minus one to one. and the output will be hence the process comes out to be a random process so we have now seen that for each outcome there exists a signal and you can see this is similar to the definition of random variable where for each output you had a real number but here for each output of the sample space of the or of the random experiment you have a uh, signal sir लॉकडाउन इन वायरलेस लास्ट डेज वही जो यू नो तरीके लैक So yes, Lamaik Bal Town was. Sir, उसकी वजह से इंटरनेट का काफी. My house was actually belonging to Lamaik Bal Town, so all the Wi-Fi signals they were locked down by the government. 
Yes, sir. So I also have to switch to a new. You know, they have. They are telling me optical fiber signals. They are not locked down, but wireless signals. They are actually. Uh, you know. Sir, वो interruption काफी अभी भी sir. अच्छा. Actually, at this time, I am have logged and from my optical. अच्छा नहीं. Oh, again, I have. I I don't know why it has switched to Zong or to you know Wi-Fi, or to wireless. So I will try next time. Uh, it comes out to be, uh, you know, optical fiber, so it will be much better. All right. So, uh, so this was I was saying the difference between uh, random variable and random process. So, uh, in effect, we can say for every outcome of a random experiment or every value of the sample space of the random of the output of the random experiment omega i, there is ex exists a function t omega i. ठीक है, which is a sample function or realization of the random process, and if I take this function and in this function I also fix time, so it becomes x t not omega i. Then we will get a number because we have fixed the sample space. We get a function. We have fixed time. We will get a now number. ठीक है, and for at different outcomes at uh, a fixed time. All right. So if you fix time and you change omega i, so you will be getting different numbers, and those numbers they will constitute a random variable. Okay, denoted by x t naught. So x is my uh, you know random process. Another now it is a random variable at this point, but we can see the मतलब के the picture of how it is it is driven it is actually equal to small x t not omega i okay which is actually x t omega i for any omega i we have a function if I fix t it becomes x t not omega i now for all those omega i's okay at fixed time t I will be getting different numbers. And it, and all of those numbers they represent a random variable denoted by x t naught. Adi, is everyone understanding? So you can see, random variable is nothing but an assignment of real numbers to the outcome of a random experiment. So we are doing the same thing now. It's a very important observation, and it bridges the concepts of random process to the random variable. So at any time instance, the value of a random process is a random variable. So at any time instant. If you fix time, this random process will become a random variable. So, uh, for example, uh, let us say I want to find the value of the random variable x, 0.001. In example, 5.2.1. So, in example, 5.2.1, you could actually see here. This was the example. The random process was this thing. So if I fix my time, t is equal to 0.01. So phi t is 0.01, uh, 0.001. I said 1 over 1000. This comes out to be 0.1 f. 2 pi into 0.1 f means 0.2 pi f. So you can see it will be 0.2 pi f. f is 1. This will be 0.2 pi 2. F is two, it will be point four pi, and so on and so forth. So these are the random variables. Okay, once I have fixed my random process at this time zero point zero zero one, and we know each of these have a probability of one over six. All right, the time is up, so we will go on from example five point two point five. If you have any questions, you can ask before I end the lecture. All right. So, no one has any question.